Hi, I'm Paul Hockman. I've been a tech journalist for the last 10 years, and I can tell you from experience anyway that upgrades and updates come fast and furious, and you learn to ignore some of them. Well, here comes an upgrade that you should not ignore from Ford, an upgrade to my Ford Touch. And here to talk to us about it is Gary Jablonski, product development manager. Gary, you have a lot of explaining to do. Okay, <laughs> let's see how I do. All right, let's start with the idea of an upgrade. A lot of people think of it as just software. But some people who have seen how powerful this new upgrade is have actually said, in some ways, they're getting a new car. Yeah, and we're excited that customers are reacting that way. Right? So the, the upgrade is really substantial, both in terms of the performance of my Ford Touch, uh, as well as its appearance and the way it feels when you use it. Right? So we're really not surprised when customers' reaction is that there's something brand new in my car now. So it feels new and it actually looks new to you, as yes, far as you're concerned. Yes, very much. So what's one of the first things that people are going to notice when they go from the old My Ford Touch, if you will, to the new My Ford Touch? So the performance upgrade that we're doing for the My Ford Touch systems is probably the biggest upgrade that, that we've ever done. Right? And it's big in two ways, what we've done to the product and also the way we're offering it to the customers. Um, from a product perspective, they're going to see extraordinary improvements in performance, right? whether it's responsiveness to the touch screen or the amount of time it takes for the system to start up in the morning. Um, the way the navigation system performs, the way voice recognition performs. Um, we have found ways with software technologies to be able to in increase the speed of the system uh, really across the board. And the other thing from a product perspective they'll notice is a significantly freshened and changed user interface. So we spent a lot of time over the last 18 months talking to our very first customers uh, who bought my Ford Touch vehicles, learning what they liked about the interface to the system and what they wished we would, would do, do differently. We've kind of synthesized all of that feedback into a really major upgrade to the user interface of the system. So is there anything that's going to remain from the old system, or is it going to look completely new? It's unmistakably my Ford Touch still, right? So as we talked to customers, they told us they appreciated the organization of the system, uh, the fact that we have four corners um, in, in the user interface that are dedicated to the different functions, whether it's climate, phone, uh, navigation, or en entertainment. Um, they appreciate the color coordination, so when you're in the different functions, um, the touchscreen is color coordinated and the, the instrument cluster in front of the driver is also color coordinated. So there's a lot of things about the system that customers told us that they absolutely loved and we've maintained all of that. Um, now I want to ask about navigation because we're looking at navigation on that screen frequently. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, let's put it this way, what, if there's a difference you could point to uh, between the old system and the upgraded system, what is it? I think they're going to see a big difference in the way the map looks and the way the map feels, right? When they make a turn it's going to turn incredibly smooth compared to their current experience. You know, I compare it to you know, kind of video game performance. Um, but the other benefit they get from it, right, so they get improved navigation, but they're also going to see everything else in the system get faster. It's a win-win for us from, a, from an engineering perspective. The next step seems to be voice, not even necessarily, if you don't want to, not even touching. Uh, but rather just speaking. Is that about right? Yes. Uh, voice has been connected with our sync technologies from the very first time we launched sync. Um, it remains a critical part of, of our MyFord Touch experience as well. And the upgrade, is it going to imp improve that as well? The feedback that we're getting from our beta testers is that their, um, their satisfaction with voice recognition is dramatically improved. They're getting faster response. They're getting more accurate responses. We haven't made sweeping changes to voice recognition in the performance upgrade, but because we've made the whole system faster, um, everything that they're experiencing about the system is improving, including voice recognition. What do you know? So the system itself, the, especially the voice recognition part of it, is actually feeling better in this upgrade, even though it has not necessarily changed itself. So somebody's learned that system, will just experience more pleasure with the system. Exactly. Um, one of the things that these beta testers, these sort of new, uh, basically customers, if you will, trying out the system for the first time are going to experience, probably was, or I heard, was acceleration. In other words, uh, acceleration of the system. Um, and I heard that video game hardware-based acceleration was used. What does that mean? We searched for software technologies we could employ on the my touch system in order to respond to customers' feedback that they wanted it when well, they wanted it to be faster, right? They wanted it to respond to their touch, respond to their voice, and, and to start much faster. And one of the things that our engineers were able to figure out is the sync computer actually has an adjacent piece of hardware in it um, that was designed to draw graphics, and that's all it's designed to do. Um, in the product we're selling today, um, we used the main sync computer to draw the graphics, and we have this piece of hardware in the box that we're really not utilizing very much. So you got basically the, the muscular hardware is now devoted to the biggest task, which is navigation. 
Correct, right. Drawing graphics on the screen is actually a really stressful and difficult task for the computer, right? Um, and my Ford Touch obviously is a very graphic intensive product, right? So, and meaning you're looking at, as for example, what? Um, well, whether it could just be the user interface on the on the eight inch on the eight inch screen, or you know, the most stressful graphical task for the for the my Ford Touch system is drawing the map, right? Okay. Um, in the performance upgrade, we've been able to move the map task to a separate piece of hardware in the box. Got it. Um, it's very similar when people buy a buy a PC, right? Often the specifications for a PC will talk about the graphics hardware that's the, the, that's inside the box. And if they're a gamer, right, they, they want the, the latest uh, available gra graphics technology in the box. So I've used the touchscreen, and I've noticed that you actually have to press pretty hard on the touchscreen, unlike, say, an Android-powered phone or an iOS. What's the difference? It's different because we use a completely different technology in the car. Um, phones are designed with a, what's called a capacitive touchscreen. They're sensitive to the proximity of your hand, but not so much the pressure you put on the device. Meaning if your hand gets near if it? If your hand gets near it, it'll activate, right? That's why you can do such a, such a soft touch and the system will, will, will react. In the car, we use a resistive touchscreen, which is sensitive to pressure. So you actually have to push on it in order to get a response. And why, why would you want something that requires actually a little more work, if you will, to push on the screen in a car? So there's really two primary reasons. One was just dur durability. Parts in a car have to work reliably from minus 40 below zero right, to um, you know, north of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And whether a car's parked in Minnesota overnight in the frigid winter and the customer starts it in the morning, right, they expect that frozen My Ford Touch, right, to work just like it does all the time. When you're in a car and you're in the driving environment and you're in traffic and, you, and you've got other, other distractions around you, um, we want to make really sure that you're confident about what you're doing before we react, right? So as you reach out to that screen, we don't want to react just because you're getting close to us. Right? We want to make sure that you physically push that button and that you really want to take the action that, that, that you're taking. Original customers of My Ford Touch noticed it took a little while sometimes for the system to boot up. Has that changed or is that something that you guys have worked on? We've been able to, again, borrow a piece of technology from the PC world and we're able to put more pieces of My Ford Touch into what I would call hibernation as opposed to shutting them down. The current My Ford Touch product, when the customer starts the car, Customers told us, right, that the system was slow to start. Um, I didn't get my navigation directions right away. My phone didn't connect right away. Um, voice recognition didn't respond right away. And that was all because there was processing that had to happen before the system was really awake. Yes, very much like starting your PC in the morning, right? And so you didn't want, you wanted to make it so customers didn't have to start their PC in the morning. They actually uh, literally touched something that was sleeping or was hibernating and was almost instantly awake and ready to go. Exactly. We looked at the analogy of the PC and the difference between shutting down a PC and hibernating a PC. Yeah. Um, and we quickly identified that there's some ideas um, in that design that we could use in my Ford Touch system. So, so how much faster does it, does it feel or is it? Is there some sort um, of metric that's different? You know, a, a driver that's going A to B, it's, it's a dramatic improvement. Um, you know, the, uh, if you have a route active when you shut the car off, when you come back and start the car up, your next instruction's available immediately. So, like, literally in seconds? Within seconds. Almost as soon as the user interface comes up in front of you, your phone's already connected, right? Customers used to have to, they, they watched the system connect to the phone, and it took, you know, sometimes some minutes okay. uh, for the customer's phone to connect. So, um, this, everything about the system is, is faster, and it's, and it's available immediately when the customer starts the car. Now, all this, this upgrade, um, now some people get a little bit nervous about upgrades because they don't really know if they're going to be going into a brand new world that they don't recognize. I assume you guys have been working on keeping it look similar, but also I assume you've been testing it a lot. And one of the things that we discovered is we actually can't think of everything customers might do, right? The system is so complex has so many features that could be that could interact with each other, right? That the only way to really know for sure is again we borrowed a concept from other software industries. We borrowed the concept of beta testing. We've allowed uh, a thousand of our employees who drive my Ford Touch vehicles to get a preliminary version of the software. They're installing it in their car just the way customers are going to install it. They're getting a USB stick at their home, and and they're going to trial this whole experience for us and give us feedback as to. What do they like about the upgrade process and what do they like and, and where are the opportunities for improvement with the product? We, we get outstanding feedback. Okay, I've heard a lot about the details of the upgrade. It's exciting. I can't wait to get it. Now, how do I do it? Where do I go to get an upgrade? Um, we think the upgrade from iFord Touches is so important and so significant of an improvement that we want more customers to have access to it. So we know a lot of customers won't take the time to create an account and to go to SyncMyRide.com. So for the performance upgrade, we're mailing the update to their house. 
So the customer will get a package in their home with a USB stick that has the upgrade already loaded on it, mm -hmm. a new SD card with new map data for their navigation system if they have a navigation equipped vehicle, and some instructions for how they can do that upgrade in their driveway. So Got it. So they're really going to get the whole package literally in one uh, envelope, if you will. Mm -hmm. They'll, and everything they need to upgrade is in that package? Yeah, for, for our customers who are, are willing and confident enough to be able to do that on, on their own, um, in 45 minutes to an hour, it kind of depends upon how old their car is and what version of software they're starting from, but a, a little less than an hour for most customers, we think, um, they can get the, the update done. Um, if they're not confident doing it on their own or for whatever reason they, they, want, uh, they want some help, uh, we also offer that they can take that package to their dealership, and their dealership will help them do the installation for them. Gary Jablonski, thank you so much for taking time. You're welcome, Paul. For more information and updates, go to SyncMyRide.com.